the Women's Six Nation Show on Off The Ball. With Vodafone, a proud supporter of the Irish women's rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. You're very welcome along. We're currently in the midst of the Women's Six Nations. Last year, we look back on the first ever Irish women's rugby team from 1993. We also spoke to some of the members of the historic 2013 Grand Slam winning team. I'm delighted to be joined by two of them now. They've stepped away from their playing days and into the world of coaching. It's Neve Briggs and Fiona Hayes. How's it going, guys? Good. Hello. Really good. Good. Glad to have you here. We might begin with... Your journey in coaching, the pathway that each of you took. We'll start with you first, Neve. 2019, I believe, you picked up a bit of an injury and it all kicked off from there. And it was a certain someone who got you involved. Yeah, absolutely. I got a pretty horrific injury from uh, from a game in Munster in the August. And uh, Fee was coaching UFOs uh, at the time. And she asked me to come on board to help out with the backs for for the time that I was going to be injured. And I didn't really mind because I wanted to stay involved before I get back playing. Um, but very quickly, uh, I caught a bug and uh, had no real interest in getting back playing. Uh, irrelevant to whether I could get back fit or not. I think we had a great time coaching for that season. Uh, really enjoyed working with Fee, but um, it quickly consumed me to the point that uh, all my waking hours were uh, watching rugby, watching coaching, watching rugby coaching, um, and trying to learn as much as I could as quickly as I could. Um, so that was kind of it, really. And then just it kind of started from there it's, it's funny I don't miss playing I don't look back and think about my playing days um, I'm enjoying coaching so much I think I think I I found my path in terms of what I wanted to do and um, and yeah look it's been lots of ups and downs uh, for sure since but uh, really enjoyable too and when you were playing did you ever think about coaching did it ever cross your mind that you know when my playing days are over that's that's the path I want to go down uh, no, not really. Uh, not 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 a hundred percent. I think uh, I've been doing a bit of punditry, and I enjoyed that. And um, um, and I obviously needed to get back to my full time job. Uh, I thought that was because they had supported me a huge amount as a player. But um, it hadn't been something that I actively thought about. Um, I, I did think I'd probably be coach kids or young girls in terms of trying to bring along that pathway. We had done a little bit together from an under 18s monster point of view before I'd gotten injured and I really enjoyed that. It was just more of a skills based stuff and I thought I'd kind of go down that road. But um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's funny how comfortable you can get. I think as a player, I was, you know, quite selfish in terms of my preparation. Didn't really think of much beyond playing my playing days, to be honest. And then once you coach, you start to think about other people and um, and developing people and players. And I think that I found that I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed pushing myself out of my comfort zone and, and more than that, I really enjoyed seeing players developing and, and building relationships with, with players and coaches and, and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of kept me in the game, but definitely from a more enjoyable point of view than playing, I think. Mm -hmm. And Fiona, was it something that you saw, Eve, that you thought, yeah, we need to get her in here? You know, she'd make a good influence? Yeah, definitely. Um, like we all know, you see, I, I, I'll bring it back to that, you know, when you asked there as well about, you know, playing. I suppose Neve was such a good player. She was absolutely like one of the, the world's best players when she was in top form with Ireland. I was never like that. So I always had an interest in coaching because what I had good behind me was that I loved the laws of the game. I loved the little nitty gritty parts of the game. So even for years before I finished uh, playing, I, I was coaching down in UCC and it was all was something that I wanted to do because I knew I knew how to be great. I just wasn't that great. <laughs> I knew I could I, I could try and explain it to other people. But look, um, I suppose with with Briggsy, um, uh, with Neve, I I would have seen like especially around the kicking game skills in particular. She she was obsessed with um you know um catch pass and up in the level of skills. And when we played uh, in those levels. I, uh, you know, we didn't have the time now that they have, you know, Jim, it, it got better, obviously, as we got to the top of our game, but she was able to to see how skills could be improved in such a, a, a short, sharp kind of period of time. And when she talked to the players, she knew instantly by elbows, hands, kicking styles, all that kind of stuff. And if you're a coach and, and you see someone like that being able to bring that on to a group of players, hey, work away, no bother with me. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe if you're in a dressing room with someone, you know, week in, week out, you see 
different personality traits, you know, if they're a talker in the dressing room, if they lead on the pitch, and you probably see that way, okay, I think she could be an influence this way. For you, Eve, what was it about Fiona? Obviously, she knew that she wanted to get into coaching from a young age. Yeah, look, I think uh, Fee knows how I feel about this. Um, I've said it to her so many times before, but she's definitely the smartest player I've ever played with in terms of understanding the game and living in the dark arts age. I think um, we didn't have a huge amount of players from a female perspective that could bend the laws like uh, <laughs> and, and get away with it, but also have a really good knowledge around what she could and could get away with. And um, she'll tell you she wasn't the greatest, but for me, definitely one of the smartest, best players I played with. And I, I, I will always remember that. But in terms of leadership, I think that was a big thing for me. Playing, I was, he was captain of the club when I um, when I was playing with Bowes for the last couple of years. And um, it's the knowledge around the game that was so good that, like, literally, I was, like, kind of... It's, it made me go away and watch a load of rugby to be able to keep up with it, to be fair. And um, and definitely was a huge role model for lots of girls in that club. So um, she came back and did a scrum session with us the last couple of weeks. Um, and I know that the girls were buzzing about that. But smartest, when you have those kind of smarts, irrelevant of what's going on around you, irrelevant of your body in terms of how powerful or quick you can be, you can get away with so much. And um, I think you know, Hayes was, was the epitome of that. It was... Uh, it was brilliant to play with and horrible to play against. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it, for sure. And Fiona, do you want to take us through then who you coach then at the minute? Um, yeah, so I'm doing a, a few bits and bobs at the minute. I was uh, I was under an eve with Munster Women's during the summer. We had a very successful interprose and I, I really enjoyed that buzz of coaching. Um, I had been with Ball and Colleague up until Christmas, but I, I'm gone from them now in the AIL. And I think with Munster in particular, it brought back that buzz to me that that's what I needed. I, You know, the girls in Ball and Colleague were everything, but I kind of lost it my way a tiny bit towards the end. And I found with Munster, I just found that buzz. And it, it's great because I'm down in Cork. I do um, Band and Grammar is a school down here and they've really looking to invest in the women's game because they've such a, a good boys rugby team or you know their senior cup and junior top cup are getting excellent so they've I've been coaching down there and it's great because you have first years to six years so you have to you have to come up with all different types of drills to be able to entertain everyone and all different like types of level or different levels and some just want to play for fun some just want to learn the game and others want to go on and play represent Munster in Ireland so that's kind of brought back that little buzz in in, in organizing sessions around fit and everything like that in and um I, I I still am with UCC since um 2009 I, I've been there I was head coach for a long time um and I just I just love the buzz of university rugby. It's it's very similar. I'm not head coach. I, I stepped away from that role. Mairead Kelly's taken over, but I go in and help with the forward stuff and um it's it's something I suppose I see a massive gap in rugby at the minute and how we can get these university girls playing a little mm. bit more club rugby or is it club rugby through the university? I don't even know what path, but I just do, I just know there's so much talent there and I, I I feel like it helped me kind of last year, particularly down in Cork with the UCC and the step from Ballincolleg or up to Ballincolleg and and vice versa. So that that's kind of the bit of coaching I'm doing at the minute and I'm and I'm always I'm on doing a bit of punditry as well. So, so so I'm keeping busy. I I, I took the punditry off Neve's uh, back there. She was doing so well. So look, I I, I mean, I'm enjoying doing both, but definitely with the coach and with Munster it, it, over the Christmas period, it just brought such a buzz back to me. Yeah, you said I'm doing a bit of coaching like that. That's a little bit more <laughs> than a bit of coaching. Like, how do you balance all that? And obviously different age groups as well. So the training, I'm guessing, is, is completely different as well. Yeah, it is. And you know what um, I found and I, I enjoyed it with Munster. When you get up to that um, that higher level, it's structured and um, it's a lot of game-based stuff. Um, but something, and I don't, and this is something about me, I'm, I'm slightly eccentric, so I actually love 
with, uh, making up my own drills. I'll come up <laughs> with these random drills. And at that younger age group, you can try and test it, you know, because they're they're having fun and and they're able to try it. And it will either work or it won't. But I, I, that's what I love about the kind of underage stuff. You just get them to play ball. There's there's no giving out. Obviously, you're correcting little things, but you want them to be able to come to the age of 18, 19 and be still in love with the game. And, and that's what I love about band grammar. As I said, I'm slightly eccentric, so I, I come up with all different types of things that will keep these uh, kids entertained and, and still in love with that game of rugby. I need to ask Neve here. She's laughing her head off. So what has she been at when she's at Munster? <laughs> <laughs> what drills has no, she brought in? <laughs> to, be, to be fair, um, I just get random messages, uh, voice notes or uh, on a training day or leading up to a gun. Uh, I thought of this drill and I think it is, you know, and it's just like a, I'm, I'm, I need, I'm just like, yeah, great. I just trust you to go and do, do what you're really good at doing. So, um, but yeah, I know I was be giggling away in the background <laughs> because uh, Bee's really passionate in case you've not noticed. So when she's talking about something that she loves, i.e. rugby or contact or scrums, uh, you just get the elevator pitch of the voice and the rush of feet <laughs> and uh, the hands are going. So, uh, but it was brilliant. A huge addition to our most coaching setup this year. So, um, no, uh, it's, it's uh, I'm just, I'm giggling away because I can totally imagine it. I know. It's like the passion comes through the screen here. I feel it as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great thing. And what was it like, Neve? I suppose, the dynamic when Bodhi is were coaching and Munster and obviously such a successful season as well. Yeah, look, it was it was it was brilliant. It was a bit of a weird one because it was a very condensed season. So I think we started um, after the well, we a couple of touch sessions, like in terms of contact touch in over the AIL season, but we couldn't really do a huge amount because obviously the AIL season was a ten week sprint, and girls were caught up in that, and we didn't want to overtrain or, or fatigue them. So I think we you know we we didn't really meet up till after the AIL final in December, and then straight into uh, three or four weeks over the Christmas period, you're asking players and, and coaches and management to give a lot of time over a period where traditionally you'd be off and um, mm. they did. It was brilliant. And um, and then we were straight into three straight matches. So it was really weird in terms of high pressure, in terms of the, the time limit that we had together. You'd love to have had more time because it was a, a brilliant group of players and a brilliant group of management. And, um, and I think everybody had, um, you know, everybody got on and when you're kind of driving that culture and it's a, it's a special thing we speak about Munster all the time it kind of that that environment or that culture within the ethos of the club is is everybody together and everybody's kind of rowing in the same direction and it's really really important and I felt like we really hit the nail on the head with that this season and you're with Munster obviously you're in with Ireland as well is there any other other teams that you're balancing as well uh yeah so I'm <laughs> head coach of the uh, Bows now to score from Fee when he went to Cork and um and then I coached a, a boys team, um, it's like a, um, on junior cup team before Christmas. And um, and then, so I, I work as a guard and on my my days off, I uh, throw myself into any of those um, Munster sessions, those boys underage, uh, NTS or um, academy uh, senior sessions. Uh, the lads are really, really good in terms of my coach development, but also um, getting an understanding of, of where the game is going um, from a... The male side of things because uh, the women are it's a very different game but mm. we've got to make sure that we're not falling too far behind and um, so yeah I think it's it, at the moment I'm trying to fit so much in in terms of teams that I'm coaching and and, and what I can do to try and learn as much as I can because I'm trying to fill myself with as much knowledge and development as possible so that I can probably set my own path if that makes any sense mm-hmm. in terms of where I'm going in my mind so um, but I'm loving it it's it's it, 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 it sounds mad because it sounds like I'm really, really busy, but the women's season is very compartmentalised. So the first block is literally just uh, AIL, then it went into Munster and then we went straight into Ireland. Um, it'll probably not be able to to be done in the foreseeable in terms of where I'm going because of the way the season structure is going to start now. It's going to start blending. It won't be as compartmentalised. It won't be blocked off um, going forward. So... Um, I'm pretty sure every decision has to be made, but I'm I'm loving every second of it because you're getting to work with elite players, obviously that are taking the field against Italy this weekend, and then you're getting to work with players that play socially in terms of of with uh, club and UFOs. So there's like a huge range, and it's really important. And each of them give me a huge amount of satisfaction. So I love working with the elite type. I love working. I'm building and growing that high performance setting. But from a club point of view, I love the fact that we're growing our numbers every week. We're able to put out two teams every weekend. We have 
40 odd girls training every Tuesday and Thursday. I love the fact that we cater for all of that. And um, and when you go to a seconds game on a Sunday afternoon at one o'clock and you see them doing stuff that we've done at training during the week, that gives me as much satisfaction as I get when I'm up in, in Ireland camp. So um, it's been brilliant and it's been really, really good for my development as well. Yeah, working with all the different levels, I'm sure it's a, a great learning curve. You're constantly learning and, you know, as a coach and wanting to progress, I'm sure being in with a team is is the best way to do it. How has it been so far with Ireland? Yeah, look, we're both very aware of where we are in terms of the development of this group and the squad. I think um, we're not hiding away from the fact that uh, the first couple of games have been really tough for us. Um, but when you take that away and take that results driven and I understand you can't really do that in high performing environments because it's results driven process but I feel like we're getting better every week um, we have an incredibly young group of players especially from a backline point of view um, you know we're talking three or four of that seven that start there in between 18 and 20 years of age and the expectation and the development for them to do it on the international stage is a really tough learning curve mm-hmm. but I think when you take that emotion away from it and you look from a, a, a detail point of view and an execution point of view, we're definitely getting better. Um, but we still have a lot of improving to do for sure. But I'm really enjoying it. I mean, yeah, from a coaching been, point of view. It's been hectic. Brilliant. That's great. You're still enjoying it. And, you know, I think when you have those hard times, do you, do you learn a lot in those moments? Yeah, hugely. You learn a lot about yourself, um, for sure. You learn a lot about your mentality in terms of mm. your ability to remain positive and but very real. I think that's very important. We can't gloss and patronise ourselves in relation to where we are. Um, I think we learn a lot about the group, and the players that we have, and about how resilient they are, that mm-hmm. on Monday mornings we can have a very tough and honest review. Probably something we didn't do when I was playing um, with Ireland. I think we've been very upfront in terms of and the standards that we're trying to set. And to be fair to them, they're all in and they're trying to reach them. It's just that we've got to be really patient. And um, But they're a brilliant group and I love working with them. And I love the people that I'm coaching with and, and the whole environment up here. I just think um, it's different. You know, Fiona and I have been in situations where we were not performing on an international stage, but it wasn't on television and social media yeah. wasn't as big as it is now. These players are learning in cold face and we've got to, be very aware of that and I think we've got to be aware, very aware of the information that they're taking in um, and you try and shield them from it of course you do that's like a natural instinct but they're also learning as well so and we're mm-hmm. learning too so um, but it's taking the results away I think from this group like I'm if you know I don't know whether I'll be involved you know going forward but you look at two or three years down the line I'm really excited about where this group can go because he and I were just talk, talking about it beforehand you're looking at that bulk of 18, 19, 20-year-olds. We're looking at an under-18 group that are performing really well over in Six Nations in England at the moment. Like, it's there. It's just that it's not... We're just missing that group of 23, 24, 25-year-olds that have that maturity and that understanding of what it takes to be at that international stage. Mm -hmm. Um, So hopefully we'll get there soon. Absolutely. And just when we were talking about there, the difference, I suppose, in... How the game has always evolved in Fiona. So when you maybe started out as a coach to now, how much has it changed in terms of on the pitch stuff to off the pitch stuff? Um, yeah, look, it's it's changed in a lot of areas. I suppose when I when I started out as well, I mightn't have been as detail focused um, in what you're doing, you know, because when you started out, there wasn't a lot of pressure on, you know, exact skills, whereas the, the game is just getting better and better. And we've seen it from a, from a, a skill set from a man, from men's point of view. And I think mm-hmm. the women's game is going in the exact same direction where everything is split second decisions. Um, not that it wasn't before, but I, I just feel like it's pressure and as a coach and I suppose with Munster just at that it, it wouldn't be as high performed as Ireland but just in that environment this year you can see that there's a lot of external pressure on these players now and you know there's you're you're dealing with when we played you're dealing with very similar players we all just went in and done it and that now you're kind of dealing with contracted players 
players who weren't offered contracts when you're when you're in that high level. You know, players that might only ever want to play with Munster, never want to play with Ireland. And then you've young players who are mad into TikTok and doing a dance and <laughs> Mary over the <laughs> we corner. We still have them. <laughs> we still have them in six, in, in Irish camp. That's the important there's, stuff. Uh, there's a group of them. Yeah. yeah and, and you're trying to blend. And, and uh, that's what I love. It's trying to blend all these together. I, I think about it. I laugh when I think about the likes of Fiona Cocklin or Lynn Cantwell. If I got out in the dressing room and started doing a dance, to my phone before a game <laughs> or you know the, we would have been killed but that's the joy of, of life now it's so exciting trying to bring these players in <laughs> and mixing that old kind of level with the new level and just getting the best out of people um, so the difference is definitely massive in the external pressure and, and how things are done but but as a coach that's what I thrive on I, I, I love trying to blend all these different type of characters I think if, if someone is uncoachable in those I'm going to put those those words in brackets I, I never see that you know I, I feel like you have to try and find the sweet spot someone will always have something that you'll be able to look on and look you're going to get different attitudes everywhere but it's it's about as a coach I love the, the idea of going behind the scenes and trying to figure out how I can get them to buy into to my crazy train mentality <laughs> in between their TikToks though yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> obviously <laughs> The Women's Six Nations show on OTB with Vodafone, a proud supporter of the Irish women's rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. And when we're looking at coaching Fiona, do is there a pathway for, for young girls now listening? Maybe, you know, maybe they're coming to the end of their playing careers, whatever it is, and they're thinking, OK, I want to get into this. How do they get involved? What are the opportunities that are out there for them? Yeah, look, I'm like, Neves probably will have a different perspective than I do um, on this. Um, I don't think it's the pathway is probably good enough at the minute, but I'm also, I'm not in Cork. So Neve created her own, Briggsy created her own pathway. She got herself involved and she's talking about those sessions and all that. So I, I think the biggest jump is trying to keep your full-time job and get involved mm. in coaching. I, I find that huge. And for me to be seen out there, and especially because I'm not up where the high performance centre is or I'm not able to get away a lot of the time to, to get to these sessions, um, I would struggle with that. But look... I, I, I kind of said it there. You can create your own pathway, and I think if you're if if you're interested in coaching, you reach out to whoever. Like um, I, I've spoken there. I'm, I'm coaching a few different groups. You'll always you'll always find a way, and and if you want to pursue any career, you'll always find a way to get there. So there is, I personally think it could be better kind of um, laid out and maybe nurtured. Um, and I think in the male game, a lot of the ex players will walk into a senior kind of role or be able to get into a role on a team it's 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 very hard for for women to do that because we've never played in that high performance era whereas they're coming from having played and that so they will seamlessly step into those roles whereas if i if i throw my my cv in for an interview and i've never been in inside that environment it's it's very hard for mm. me to get up to that level i think if you can get in it at all but that would also mean that I have to quit my job and, and give it a blast. Do you know what I mean? So I, I struggle with that kind of balance at the minute and deciding if, if I want to really pursue it, I'll have to 100% go for it. But if, you, if you're if you just interested in coaching, I think there's clubs screaming out always um, for, for, for coaches and you get yourself involved that way, you'll get a feel for it then. You'll see, you might think, oh God, I don't ever want to be a head coach. I just want to coach the scrum like Briggsy likes coaching, don't you, Briggsy? <laughs> 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 or, or whatever area of the game or else you could think like I, as I said I love that player mentality you can get into that mm -hmm. side of things and head coaches can organise that different stuff so I think there's always a pathway from my perspective I think there's a there's a lot of trees and different things in the way on that pathway and, and I've struggled to try and gain my way through it but, um, but I'm kind of assessing that now and having a look at that now so I'm kind of at a crossroads in that um, and that's where I'm at but definitely clubs are are always screaming out for coaches you've just got to make yourself available and as long as you enjoy it I think stick with it and go all the way you can. Neve, what do you think is there a structure in place it sounds like there's not so much it's sort of up to yourself to go out and sort of find those opportunities. No look I think Fiona's hit the most important nail in the head that from a club point of view uh, clubs are screaming out for coaches mm. we you know what I mean we're both are the exact same. We're looking for coaches all the time, and um, and there is a pathway for that domestic game type of coaching. You know, there's 
coaching courses that were run provincially for for that. I think what Fiona's talking about trying to break through is break through into that high performance, that full time mm. professional setting. That's really difficult. It's really difficult from um, a male's um, point of view in terms of there are only five professional teams in Ireland, the four provinces and the Irish men's team. And when you think about the female game, you're thinking of an even smaller portion to that because it's literally just um, the national the national team in terms of Greg and John um, and, and mm-hmm. the players that are contracted. So right now it seems like it's a difficult thing to try and push through to that elite level in terms of a full-time coaching role. But I don't think it's far off. I, I really don't. I, don't. I think the game is evolving so fast. The resources that are being put in now on the back of things over the last couple of years are, are, are so big that it, it can't be contained to just have one two a two-person thing with you know, a certain amount of players. It's, it's going to have to evolve the whole way through. And we see, you know, recently the RFU are looking to appoint eight full-time staff, two in each provinces, one to work at Talent ID mm-hmm. and, and nurture that pathway with an S&C coach. And, and that's huge. That is a valuable resources being put into each provincial hub so that there is somebody full time looking after looking after the pathway of 16 year olds and up and I think that something the game has been crying out for for a very long time we've mm-hmm. spoken already about missing that age gap and I do think that that investment is huge um, but from a domestic game point of view from wanting to get into coach schools and, and AIL clubs there is pathways in terms of there's coaching courses within your provinces and they're really important and they're run like two or three times a year. And I think on the back of that, clubs will be willing, like they'll pay for those coaches or those courses for you because they want you to coach. And mm-hmm. and if, you, if you're if you in it and you love it, you know what I mean? It becomes a very easy decision to make. I think it's when, you know what I mean? Once we create that pathway for them and, you know, we can definitely do more. I, I 100% like I didn't. Yeah, if you got, I, I can definitely do more in terms of that. But I do think that it's evolving all the time. And I think when we look at those new coaches that are going into those pathways, I think that's going to be huge for the game. And I think that investment will filter down then to the next super set of coaches because they'll be able to build relationships and 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 a rapport with club and school coaches within their provinces. And then all of a sudden they're getting better as well. So mm-hmm. it's got a knock on effect to all that. Um, so look, I think it's 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 on the road to, to getting better. Um and I and I just think that um we've got to support that along the way. Yeah. You both spoke about the men's side of things. Neve you mentioned being involved with an underage boys team. I think before previously as well, Fiona, you mentioned being involved with one. Is the men's side of things, the men's game, maybe at a, a high level, is, is that a possibility, Fiona? Is it something that's crossed your mind that you'd you'd like to go that direction? Yeah, of course. I, I've taught about it. I was involved with Dolphin. It was like a J2 team and it was one year um, and I absolutely loved it. I was a bit nervous, I suppose, going in the, the first day of training, being like, are these guys going to listen to what this little ginger is rocking up and telling them what to do, especially scrum time. You know yourself, a J2 team, know it all when it comes to scrums and, and picks and, pick and goes. I couldn't possibly tell them anything. But look, I absolutely adored it. I love that side of thing. They... Um, they it's it's an age old thing that people say but there definitely was less questions they're they're doers they like to to get out and do it you know the women's side you might get 40 little questions but that's that's just all part of the process um i loved it i'd love to get involved in um a higher level kind of uh men's AIL team but then that means stepping away from the women's side of things Mm -hmm. I've been involved in the women's game for so long so so that's a decision and I'd also be I suppose bottom of the chain if I'm moving up to to anything got to do with the men's team I'd have to try and build start out you know um I suppose in a role that you mightn't be getting paid for and then try and build your way up to to try and get maybe a a, a forwards or an assistant coach role but it's 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 definitely something um I've thought about because I watch enough men's rugby you know, we all grew up watching because we didn't grow up watching women's rugby. Mm-hmm. So we've watched the game evolve as well as everyone else. So I, 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 I'd love to get involved in that side of things. But as I said, I'm, I'm doing a lot at the minute. It's kind of, I, I'm, that's what I mean. I'm at that crossroads. Do I want yeah. to, to leave the women's game? Do I want to concentrate on underage? And there are decisions that I've had to make. Would I love to push up? I, 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 of course, I'd love to push up to high performance levels. But you're always questioning yourself when it comes to that. Um, you know, 
am I good enough? Um, do I talk the talk? Do I have the correct language? <laughs> do, do people want to listen to my Limerick you accent? You do, Fiona, you absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> but look, um, I love it. And um, Neve uh, Briggsy has been involved in loads of um, guys' kind of stuff over the summer, especially those camps and those junior cup teams. That's another side of things, which is, is brilliant. Those junior cup and senior cup building those things. So I'm sure she'd be able to, like, from her perspective, she'd have nothing but positive stuff about that because she's so good and detailed especially in her skills and how she coaches mm. the skills that those guys would absolutely feed off her and and having her her kicking you know her kicking game and her, she's always had such a good technique that I'm sure they've they've lapped up everything that she said in, in that environment yeah what was that like for you Neve? yeah look it was great I think I was there more to learn from a coaching perspective um as opposed to coach the boys but I I loved it I loved every second of it and I continue to do that. I continue to rock up to sessions in UL, whether they want me to or not, <laughs> um, because uh, I I'm learning loads from them. Look, it's it's a funny thing. I think it, it, the the break in the ceiling of trying to get into the men's game is is all well and good, but I think from a point of view, it's in my mind at the moment. For me, it's just rugby. So whether I'm coaching male or female, whether it's boys or girls, it doesn't make a difference. I think my passion at the moment, similar to fees, is. It's developing the women's game to get to a point where we can um, actively have competitive domestic game. We can actively have a competitive interpro into an elite system. And I think that's been really kind of where my focus is at at the moment. And um, I do love to go out to those underage um, sessions, the NPS boys, the the, the academy and, uh, and that, because you're just getting a different viewpoint. You're getting an understanding that, um, you know, if you're coaching a girl that's 18 or 19, um, with a training age of a year or two and you're coaching a boy who's in a senior cup school and his training age could be for, you know, 15 years, we're actually not a million miles away. And I often think coming away from those sessions from terms of a skills by point of view, from a detail in relation to breaking down a skill, let's say, for example, a catch pass, that girls aren't a huge million miles away and, and they're, you know, learning very quick. So it, 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 it buoys me when I go into those sessions in terms of at the start I was like oh my gosh like like when I saw the detail of the sessions and how they were being run I thought um, and the physicality and the pace the boys were going at I thought oh my gosh we're a million miles off it but it's more when you break things down and you put them into situations where they're they're making decisions under pressure mm -hmm. that it's actually not that similar um, and so now I think we've we can get on the train of training at an intense period, training at high high speed in terms of putting our skills under pressure, under high speed. Um, we can make huge amount of jumps very quickly. Um, so, yeah, look, I think you're learning a lot, but um, also in the back of your mind, you're, you're thinking that, you know, it's not too dissimilar really in terms of how you prepare, how you coach and, and the building relationships with players. Exactly, yeah. And I might finish up by asking both of you then to tell me what you think the most important attributes are in a coach. So for you, Fiona, what do you think you really need to have as a coach to, to be successful and to get the best out of your players? Um, I think one of the biggest thing is uh, calmness. I think you need to be uh, have the ability to stay calm. Um, <laughs> 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 because uh, I definitely probably didn't have that ability as a player and I, I've learned how to, to, to do that. I just think, especially when you're trying to explain things because you're moving from where you're trying to explain something in a short um, period. So you've got to get your language across. Mm -hmm. You've got to remain calm and you've got to be able to, to for them to understand what you want. Um, and the other side of things, I suppose it's just... You know, I think it's you can have all the the attributes, the skill sets, and learn everything. But it's how you approach. You need to be a people person. You need, as a coach, for people to want to buy into what you're saying. You want them to listen to you. You want them to be better because you're you're explaining and they understand that you're giving everything because you have that passion. So that that's huge for me. Everything else you can learn and you can go through drills and you can do all that. But as as a person, I think the ability to get everybody to buy in to what you're saying and and build them up as people and make them understand you know that they are very important and their happiness is key to them enjoying the game yeah absolutely and for you Neve, what are the the most important attributes to have yeah look i think it differs i think the most important thing or relevance of whether you're head coach or assistant coach of whatever it's about relationships of people you've got to be able to 
have a, a good sense of communication so that they can understand what you're saying and you can get the best out of them. I think you've got to be open and transparent in relation to how you go about your things and managing a group of people. So like managing 30 women is pretty, pretty <laughs> difficult thing to do. Very so straightforward. you've got to be able to be um, <laughs> open, open, open and, uh, and transparent with all of that. I think if you find, if you're open and honest with players, with people that you coach with, with management, you get it back in tenfold. I think that's really, really important. I think from a rugby point of view, you just got to have an understanding of your technical and tactical awareness in relation to how you want to coach and what you want to coach and, and how you, you know, and having that organisation in, um, in the back of your mind in, in terms of what you're looking to do and how you want to do it. But it, it all comes down to relationships with people and, and developing that. And if they don't, if you don't, if you're not going to be able to communicate properly and you're not going to be able to show your vulnerability and your weakness, then you won't get, you know what I mean? There, there'll always be that little bit of a barrier between you and, and your playing your players. And I think that that's really, really important. It's probably the biggest thing that I've learned. And, um, but also the biggest thing that I've had to do because I'm I, a bit of an extrovert on the pitch, but often I'm, I'm very much happy enough to kind of be in the background and, and see um, and allow the likes of Fiona to do her TikTok dances. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, um, <laughs> um, um, but when you're coaching, you just don't have that. You just can't do that. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to be the one to walk into the room and to greet people. You've got to make sure that everybody feels included and um, and um, and and listened to. And I think that's really, really important. So from that aspect, that aspect I think that's probably my biggest learning so far. It's not really about the rugby. It's more about the people people and the relationships that you build absolutely well we've really enjoyed following your coaching journeys and we will continue to follow it and the best of luck to both of you thanks so much for joining me the women's six nation show on otb with vodafone a proud supporter of the irish women's rugby team we all belong to the team of us the women's six nation show on off the ball with vodafone a proud supporter of the irish women's rugby team we all belong to the team of us